Let's take a look at the following linear inequality in two variables. We have minus y is less than or equal to minus x over two plus two. All right, here our linear inequality is given in slope intercept form. Uh, we simply need to divide through by minus one so we can have a positive y out front. All right, so let's go ahead and do so. We have, we're dividing all three terms by minus one, which these two negative signs will cancel. So we have y, now we have to flip our inequality sign because we're dividing through by a minus one. So our less than or equal to sign becomes a greater than or equal to sign. These two signs will cancel. And let's go ahead and write our slope out front by separating uh, this fraction here. So we have one half times x. So we can clearly see that our slope is one over two. And plus, well we have a minus two. So we have because two divided by minus one is minus two, so we have y is greater than or equal to one half x minus two. Here is our equation, or our, excuse me, our inequality in slope intercept form. So let's go ahead and uh, pick out a few values for x to plug into our linear inequality so we can find a few points on our graph that we can plot together and draw with a line. So we have, let's go ahead and pick out a few easy ones. Let's go ahead and take a look at x equals zero we're letting x equals zero, so y equals one half times x, which is zero minus two. Remember, we're letting y equal this expression because we want two particular points um, that go on the graph that we can connect with a line. So we have those two terms canceling. We have minus two, so we have the point zero minus two. That's our first point. Let's go ahead and find a couple more. We have x equals one, so we have y equals one half times one minus two. We have one half times one is just one half minus, uh, let's go ahead and convert two into four halves so we can subtract our two fractions in the next step. One minus four is minus three over two. So our second point is one and minus three halves. And let's go ahead and get a third point. Um, let's use a negative number for our, our x value so we can get a taste of what's going on on the negative side of x. So we have y equals one half times minus one minus two. One half times minus one is minus one half minus two. Let's go ahead and convert two into four halves just like above. So we can combine our fractions in the next step. Minus one and minus four is minus five over two. And that gives us our third point, minus one. And when x equals minus one, y equals a minus five halves. All right, so we have three points to plot on our graph. And again, this doesn't have to be pretty. We just want a rough sketch. We can work on making it look good later on. This is our y-axis. This is our x-axis. And another good thing about choosing small values, um, not only does it make the calculation simple, but it makes scaling our graph simple. It makes graphing these, plotting these two points and graphing this linear inequality very simple. All right, so we have our first point is zero and minus two, which is right here. Second point is one and minus three halves. So one and minus one and one half, it's right there. And minus one and minus five halves or minus two and a half, it's right there. All right, so let's go ahead and combine these three points with one line. It's gonna be a solid line because we have greater than or equal to, so we're including all the points on this line. We do so by having a solid line. And we want, we're gonna look at this slope intercept form inequality, not this one, because this one's the one solved for positive y. This was a negative y, so we had to flip the sign. We want all the values that's greater than this line. And so we shade Go ahead and get a different color. We shade above the line. So this linear inequality in two variables is con it, the value. The the interval contains all the values on the line and above the line. So that's what what is meant by greater than or equal to. All right, let's go ahead and do another one. Let's take a look at y is less than two x minus one. Two x minus one. All right, this one's already in, in nice, um, pretty form, so we just simply have to plug in uh, three values in for x so we can have three points on our line. So let's let x 
equals zero. And when x is equal to zero, y is equal to two times zero minus one. Those two terms cancel, so we just have y equals minus one. So we have the point zero minus one. And let's get a little bit of taste of um, the values of x on the left side and the right side. So we have x equals one. And when x equals one, y equals two times one minus one. Two times one is two, two minus one is one. So we have the point one, one. Let's go ahead and get x equals minus one. Let's go ahead and get the point for that. So we have y equals two times minus one. We're just subbing in uh, minus one in for x into our linear inequality up here. And minus one. So two times a minus one is minus two. Minus two and minus one is minus three. Our third point is minus one and minus three. All right, so let's go ahead and plot these on our Cartesian plane. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. We should be very familiar with this by now. Here's our x-axis, here's our y-axis. Our first point, zero minus one is right here. Second point is one, one, right there. Third point is minus one, minus three. That's right there. We can connect them with a, with a dotted line. We're gonna use a dashed line because it's less than, not less than or equal to. So there's our line, I'm trying to make it straight as possible. It's gonna continue in both directions. And all this means is we're not, con is we're not including any points on this line. We're excluding all the points on this line, just like in a number line. And we're going to be looking for all the values that are less than, less than this line. So we're gonna shade underneath this line. So it looks something like this. All right, not a whole lot to these. Uh, we've done several of these on a number line. We're just looking at, taking a look at what it actually does on a Cartesian plane in two dimensions. So let's take a look at another one. We have minus 6x plus 3y is greater than or equal to 6. All right, here are linear inequalities in standard form, so let's go ahead and convert it into slope-intercept form. We could sub, or we can add 6x to both sides. We want y on the left side and everything else on the right side, so we have 3y is greater than or equal to 6x plus 6. We can isolate our variable by dividing all three terms by three. Those two terms cancel, so we have y is greater than or equal to uh, 6x over three is the same thing as 2x, and six over three is simply two. So here is our new linear inequality in slope-intercept form, and this is what we'll be using for the remainder of the problem. Let's go ahead and plug in a few values for x. We have x equals zero, when that occurs, y is equal to two times x, which is zero, plus two. These two terms cancel, so y equals two. So when x is equal to zero, y is equal to two. That's our first point. We just need to go ahead and find two more, just for accuracy. So we have y equals two times one, subbing in one for x. Two times one is two, two plus two is four. Our second point is one, four. Let's go ahead and find a third one. Let's go on the negative side of x. So we go ahead and plug in minus one. Y equals two times minus one plus two. Two times minus one is two. Minus two and positive two give us zero. So we have the third point minus one and zero. All right, so we go at, we have our three points here. So let's see what it looks like on the graph. Here's our y-axis, here's our x-axis. One, two, three, four, five, and just a couple. We should be very familiar with scaling a graph right now. We can look at the biggest values to see how big we need to scale it. Four is the biggest value. So we have zero and two, that's this point right here. We have the point, that's messy, one and four, which is right here and minus one and zero. There's three points. We wanna connect with a solid line because we have 
y is greater than or equal to. So it's going to be a solid line running through these three points. The domain and range are a set of all real numbers, so the line continues infinitely in both directions. And we're interested in all the values that are greater than the line, so above the line. So we're shading above the line here. And that's all there is to it. Uh, we'll do a few more in the next video. We're out of time, so I'll see you soon.